and welcome back to our special edition of the Forerunner Chronicles, where we're talking about torture in America, the United States Vatican connection. When we went to break earlier, we had Daniel Levine coming in on via satellite, and we were trying to get a statement from him on whether or not waterboarding is actually torture. Mr. Levine, are you prepared at this time now to share with us whether or not waterboarding is actually torture? Mr. Keith Oberman, as we can see right now, it seems as though Mr. Levine is a little preoccupied at this time. Could you jump right in for him and elaborate on the topic of waterboarding? Is it torture? Waterboarding, he said, is torture. Legally, it is torture. Practically, it is torture. Ethically, it is torture. And he wrote it down. Wrote it down somewhere where it could be contrasted with the words of this country's 43rd president. The United States of America does not torture. Made you into a liar, Mr. Bush. Made you into, if anybody had the guts to pursue it, a criminal, Mr. Bush. Well, you know, Keith, I have to agree with you. I really believe that the heroics of Daniel Levine, his bravery, has allowed the injustices of the GOP to be brought to light. But I'm also realizing the fact that it is God that is bringing these injustices to the public's view at this time. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29 and verse 29, it clearly says there that the secret things belongeth unto the Lord thy God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of his law. Keith, I'm realizing clearly here that God is allowing the world to see that his word is true. He's allowing the world to see that the prophecies in his holy Bible relating to the United States of America are true and that they are that they are actually being fulfilled right before their very eyes. That's what I'm seeing right now. But as I'm looking at your face, I see that you're really perturbed over this whole situation. Why is that? What's troubling you about this, Keith? There are rules. And even if we just make up these rules, this country observes them anyway because we're American. Well, Keith, I can understand what you, why you say that. And it's very interesting that you would make that remark. Because the author that wrote that book, Great Controversy, also made this statement. When the Protestantism, or rather when Protestantism, shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government, and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. Keith, this is exactly what's going on right now. God help us. Well, Keith, our time is running out on the program. I'm so glad that you were able to be here with us. Do you have any final comments that you would like to make? Mr. Bush, in the seven years of your nightmare presidency, this whole string of events has been transformed. From its beginning as the most neglectful protection ever of the lives and the safety of the American people, into the most efficient and cynical exploitation of tragedy for political gain in this country's history. And then to the giddying prospect that maybe you could do what the military fanatics did in Japan in the 1930s and remake a nation into a fascist state so efficient and so self-sustaining that the fascism itself would be nearly invisible. Thank you, Keith. By now, many of you out there realize that, or you have become intelligent enough to realize that, the United States government is against its citizens. But some of you out there may be questioning as to why I am speaking so sternly against the papacy. And this is because the Bible speaks so sternly against the papacy. Martin Luther, the champion of the Protestant Reformation and the founder of the Lutheran Church. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church. John Knox, the founder of the Presbyterian Church, these men and many others accurately identified the papacy as the little horn of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 8. 
as the man of sin and the son of perdition of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, as the first beast of Revelations chapter 13, and as the whore of Revelations chapter 17, and as the antichrist of Bible prophecy. Martin Luther, the champion of the Protestant Reformation, the man that was responsible for bringing forth the truth that actually, that actually set in motion the movements that brought this country, the United States of America, into existence. But unfortunately, Luther, we don't want to remember that truth. Because, as it is now, it always has been. As time continues to rush on, and money continues to change hands, as the, and the poor desire to have the comforts of the rich, somehow, ancient truth, which men gave their lives for, and that our forefathers held so near and dear to their hearts, becomes uncouth, unwanted, strange, and then forgotten about. But no matter, because in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 20, the Bible says that we have a more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well that ye take heed, as a lamp that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star, which is Jesus Christ, arises in your heart. Take heed to my words. The union of church and state shall take place in the United States of America. The Protestants of this country, which so-called claim that they believe in the Ten Commandments, but in reality only keep nine, will make sure of this. And the United Nations and the Illuminati's henchmen will be in the forefront in forcefully urging the global community to legislate that Sunday should be a mandatory day of worship for all of its citizens. And the Pope will hold the reins to this religio-political massacre. Our only hope in this time is to surrender our hearts to Jesus Christ. Ask Him daily to give us His Holy Spirit so that we will have the ability and the desire to separate from our sins and to obey all ten of His commandments. And that includes His fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath, which is on Saturday, not Sunday. Keith, I see you over there, and I want you to know something. According to Revelations chapter 14, we can clearly see that the final movements in this earth, the final combat in this earth, will be over worship. Whether it is the worship of the true and living God, or the worship of the beast. What side will you be on? Mr. Oberman, do you have any last words that you would like to share with the American public at this time? Good night and good luck. Well said, sir. As always, this is the forerunner, and the truth is the truth. <laughs>